Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Herbal Knowledge Keepers with Dakota Granny Woman and myself, Blue Star Dear Woman. And we are very happy to bring to you today's episode is going to be on the topic of burdock. And Dakota will be sharing the herbal database, demonstrating how you can do your own research and be self-empowered in your own healing and gaining of herbal knowledge and healing. Okay. So everybody, hi, we are bringing you burdock today, one of the the very favorite herbs that we work with in herbalism. It's one of our premier fall roots. So if you're growing it or you have it wild, this is the time to locate it before the leaves are gone. And it's a great time to start digging it up. So let's just take a look at this in the database and find out more about why it's so special. This central image here is burdock. I'm going to pull up the information panel and go through some of this with you. This is just generally referring to burdock as a whole. Usually we use the root, but different parts of the plant have different functions, and we'll break it down a little bit. So we see that it's Number one function is to promote cleansing. It's going to help clear toxins out and uh, dredge the kidneys. It is diuretic and it will help expel different types of stones. It's a restorative for the urinary tract and it harmonizes urination. It restores the liver, stomach, and pancreas. And then if we continue down, we see that it is diaphoretic, meaning that it helps to bring on sweating. And it activates our immunity, restrains infection, and antidotes poison. So that makes it one of our important winter herbs when we're all paying attention to how we can avoid, avoid the winter illnesses. We want to stimulate our immune system. We want to be sure that the lymphatic system is cleansed, that the blood's in good shape. So when we talk about burdock as a cleanser, one of the old-fashioned terms for it is a blood cleanser. And if you look up at the top, that's what depurative means, a blood purifier. So it simply helps uh, cleanse the blood indirectly. It's rather complicated how it does that, but it does. And uh, over here on the left, we see some of the phytochemicals in burdock that help it with its magic. One of my favorites is caffeic acid. It's interesting to go through these and see what they do. Let's just take a quick look at caffeic acid. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to pull up the information panel again. And we see that it's an antioxidant and how it prevents oxidative damage. It helps protect against fluoride toxicity. It helps with Alzheimer's. Uh, there's an anti-tumor action. And uh, it's, it's a very complex chemical. Up here at the top, if you wanted, you could go through and see the types of things that this single phytochemical will do. But of course, burdock is loaded with all kinds of things. And so let's come back here. I'm clicking on burdock to bring it back. And uh, we've got it broken down into several areas here. Because this is the autumn, we're focusing on the root, the burdock root. There mm -hmm. are two types of burdocks. There's the common burdock that, that grows wild here in Arkansas. And there's another one that's called the giant burdock. And uh, you might see it referred to as gobo. That's the one I prefer to grow because it has a much larger root and the leaves are absolutely ginormous. Have you used burdock? Yes, actually, I have made the burdock tincture for years. And, and go ahead, any, any interesting results? Um, well, one of the interesting things I learned about it is I've always known it as a blood purifier, uh -huh. but it was a combination, adding burdock to echinacea and gustifolia, uh -huh. making a tincture with those two. Uh, 
served as a uh, to treat herpes and fever sores. Oh. That it helped suppress, uh, create you know, it would create dormancy of okay. the outburst. Ah. So I was very successful with that combination. Okay. Well, that falls in line with it as a purifier. If we look at the top, this is where we see different functions of burdock, different things that it treats. And there's a scroll bar there which tells us there's quite a few of them. So here we see that it regulates fluids, it promotes cleansing. Here we see that it works on the lymph system and it promotes the breakdown of waste products and cleaning those out of the system. It helps with abdominal pain and bloating and of course that's going to depend a little bit on what's causing the pain and bloating. But consider burdock. I'm going to scroll through a few more of these. Well there's your abscesses. Taking it internally is going to help with acne and uh, adden adenitis. What is adenitis? You might go through some of these and go what the heck is that? Right. <laughs> so this, yeah. makes, this makes it easy to find out. We see here that it's a general term for the inflammation of a gland or a lymph node. These are different herbs that help with that. Let's go back to burdock. Mm -hmm. One of the nice things about the database is it makes it really quite fast to find out what different terms mean. Okay, so then let's go to uh, alterative. That means that it's altering the chemical makeup of the fluids in particular here. It is one of the cooling herbs for the liver, helps with anemia, anti-allergy, I'm not going to look up all these terms for you because it's too much. I'm just going to scroll through and mm -hmm. you can see. You can stop me at any time. And Dakota, when we're talking about, you did mention, we're talking about the root. Yes. Uh, and, and are the medicinal properties equally accessible through a tincture and a decoction and a tea? Okay, we'll look at that. I'll show you where to find it. Mm -hmm. So look at all of the things that that burdock helps with. Wounds. And it's a great food. So here, if you wanted to use it as a food, which is always encouraged, we have information on using it that way. It has a high amino acid profile and it's high in minerals. So here's one cup of boiled root contains this much calcium, magnesium, etc. And um, my favorite way of using it is as burdock patties. They're really good if you put a lot of garlic in them. So here's mm -hmm. recipes for, for burdock patties and um, you know fritters. You can eat the stock that's done in Italy a lot. How to make a soup out of the stem, how to ferment it, pickle it, and roast it. So the reason it's blue is because it is a wild food. Now you want to get the root the first year. This is a biennial plant. The second year that root is going to be pretty nasty. So you'd want to get that. I like to collect it in the early fall. You can take it earlier as a food if you want, it's provided it's grown larger. Obviously, the longer you leave it in the ground, the larger it's going to be. So uh, it's a good idea if you're going to grow it, to grow it in deep, loose soil so that that root can really expand to the maximum. So let's just go to the root itself. Are you going to invite us out to the land when you harvest burdock? <laughs> Actually, we're going to do that in one of the workshops. Uh, I'm not sure of this one or the next one. We don't have that much, unfortunately, but we are going to do it. 
And so I'm going to pull this green up. There are different ways. I can do it this way, just clicking on that upward pointing arrow. Here's some links that you can click on. And we see here the different actions of the root. It's very good for digestion of fats. So if you have trouble with that, take some burdock as a, probably a decoction after your meal. And a decoction is where you've cooked the root into a kind of a tea. We see here a cancer study. And um, it can be useful. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it contains L-asparagine, which can be useful in complex anti-cancer therapies with, in conjunction with other things. We see how it's very good for the skin. It's antibacterial and antifungal. Now note the commercial dried root has considerably less qualities of these antibacterial and antifungal properties. So it's a good reason why you should grow this if you have a garden. I think it's really pretty. And um, it has psychological effects is from, is from Matthew Wood. He says that burdock helps us deal with our worries about the unknown. And it's a remedy for scalp problems. There's something called burr oil that's used in Europe to treat dandruff mm -hmm. and prevent hair loss. So those it's also, uh, just to comment, burdock is, it is not very difficult to grow. I mean, it pretty much goes on its own. Yeah. Yeah. And so here are the phytochemicals that are specific to burdock root. And uh, here we see that it protects the liver. And um, it can be used as a hair conditioner, helps the skin, anti-aging, atherosclerosis. Now, of course, when you click on these and read, you'll find out exactly how the burdock root works for that. Now, mm -hmm. here's research that's been done and there's quite a bit of it, which is interesting to read. Uh, click on any of these links to go to different studies. And um, we see here how it helps with ulcers, how it can prevent atherosclerosis, how it can help with uh, blood sugar. That would be part of the blood cleansing. And uh, even tuberculosis, both burdock and colt's foot, were shown to have anti-tubercular activity. And uh, neurodegenerative diseases. This is something that we don't really usually think of for burdock, but it is also neuroprotective. And uh, so if you have any reason to be concerned about developing a neurodegenerative disease, that's another reason to take burdock. So I'm going to just come back up here real quickly and point out that there are some cautions. We always want to check cautions. Okay, well, the only caution here is to know that the commercial dried root doesn't have as much of an antibacterial, antifungal quality. So if that's what you're using it for, you might want to use something else if you only have the commercial dried stuff. Okay, so that's pretty good as far as really no cautions other than that. You can make burdock potato chips and you can mm. grind it into a flour. So as a wild food, it's fabulous. Now let's go back up to burdock itself because this even though we're talking about roots, this is also a good time to collect the seeds. And a lot of folks aren't going to like that because those seeds are burrs. And getting the yeah. seeds out is not an easy thing, but it's worth doing. I use some, I use tools. My, my preferred way is to open them with uh, tongs so I don't touch them directly. And then the seeds will generally just fall out if I 
pry the the burr open and uh, we see that the seeds are really good for acute disorders. They're similar to the rest of the plant, but if you've got an acute situation, the use of the seeds is going to give you faster results. The root is preferred for chronic conditions. It's slower to manifest, but it yields more permanent results. So it's a good thing to have both of them on hand. And so you can use the seed to remove toxins in fevers and infections like mumps and measles and tonsillitis. Also, if you don't want to bother taking the seeds out of those burrs, just gather the burrs and uh, brew them up into a, like a, an infusion and strain it and cool it and you can wash your pets with that to kill fleas. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, so they can increase, the, the seeds can increase the effectiveness of echinacea in treating colds and flu, especially if they're swollen glands or tonsils. Mm. Uh, and they can ease the nausea called by lo, caused by lobelia. Always keep lobelia in my medicine kit. And uh, if somebody needs to take a lot of it for some reason but just can't stomach it, possibly a, a little bit of seed tincture along with it would help. And then they really hone in on the urinary tract for stones. And you see you could mix those with Queen Anne's lace seeds. So there's quite a bit here that the seed does. We've got some more studies. Cancer, helping the bones, ovarian cancer. So don't forget those seeds. And they might be still on your plants. This is uh, beginning of October. They're probably still there, unless you have animals running around collecting them in their fur. <laughs> so we're going back to burdock right now. And um, let's just go to the preparations. You asked about preparation and dose. Mm -hmm. Here's recipes for a burn poultice using burdock. And this is a blend of catnip and burdock as a kidney and gallstone cleanse. We're not going to open that up just because of time. Folks, you can come into the database and look all that up. But let's just check out preparation and dose. Okay, so here are directions for making it a decoction, a tincture, a poultice, a wash of the root. And then you can use the leaves. We didn't go through the leaves, but they also do beautiful work and um, uh, so use those leaves you might use them now before they're gone although it's better to use them before it goes to, into flower anyway as far as doses of the decoction it would be one teaspoon of the root simmered in one cup of water for 10 to 15 minutes three times a day uh, you can take the dried powder and again, preferably, if you are growing it, make your own, dry it and make your own powder. That way you mm -hmm. know it's fresh. And then for the tincture, it's a one to five tincture, 20 to 40 drops, three times a day. And let's just see if we've got some more goodies up here at the top. Um, oh, yeah, what's the best way to take burdock? Any way you can think of. <laughs> 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 Just get it in you. It's got so many virtues that no one way of taking it encompasses them all. Teas are not better than tinctures. Soups are not better than stir fries. Think of burdock as a nourishing herbal food. Work it into your diet. Consume it regularly. Take a tincture, a decoction, anything. Just take it. It's Is it also uh, considered a bitter? Um, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has kind of a, the root has kind of a sweet, cloying, oily kind of taste. Matthew, I think it's Matthew Woods refers to it as the, something like the master of oils or something like that. Because it regulates, it helps regulate the oil in the skin. But let's pull that up. Um, a bit bitter. Okay. So... You know, when he, here when we say a bit bitter, 
that just means that it has a little bit of the bitter function in helping the digestive system and pungent, but that's just a little tiny bit. It's really, I guess you could taste that kind of in the back of your mouth. You know how sometimes when you eat something that initially tastes one way and then it changes and you detect mm -hmm. a slight, slight bitterness. Right. But mostly it's bland tasting. Um, and to me, I, I, I describe it as sort of coin, although that's not an official quality. It's kind of, it's got an oily type of a, a texture to it. When you cook it, I find if you're going to boil it, which I do before I make the patties, I put a little baking soda in that and it improves it. Uh, and don't throw that water away because if you're boiling it, you've made a decoction. And if you take the strain it to use that root in cooking, you've got a nice... Uh, water decoction left behind that you can drink even with the baking little baking soda in it that doesn't hurt so it's cooling and um, it's considered both moist and dry and what that means is that if um, you've got a dampness in the tissues it'll help to dry that dampness up and if you need more moisture especially more oil in the skin for example um, it will help to increase that moisture. So here we have some of the constituents. And it's tropism, kidneys, bladder, liver, and skin. What that means is that those are the parts of the body it tends to zero in on. And if you go through this, you see we're talking about both the Chinese classifications and therapeutics as well as the Greek which is what Western herbalism is based on. And we include some of the terms used in contemporary Western medicine, like urinary stones, um, irregular painful clotted menstruation, diabetes, it's supportive for that, eruptive fevers, so, and herpes, here you go. Here's mm -hmm. where it says for herpes sores. Mm -hmm. Reducing inflammation hard but mobile swelling. So it really kind of, we try to break it down into a lot of specific types of things that you can use burdock for. So that's all we're going to talk about with burdock. Uh, oh, I do want to mention in terms of the tissue states, for those of you who have learned about the six tissue states, it's one of the recommended herbs for dry atrophy the tissue state dry atrophy. Okay. So, folks, go get that burdock. Yeah. Think about growing it. If you if you didn't get it this year, plant it. And again, a reminder to our viewers is that you can get a subscription to the Herbal Database. Absolutely. This is a wealth of knowledge that we would like to share with everyone. So that concludes our topic on burdock, and we hope that, again, that these episodes encourage you to sign up, get a subscription to the Herbal Database, and you can look at all the prior episodes. Uh, each episode is a different theme, a different topic, but we continue to demonstrate how to use it. Happy harvesting. Go out and get those roots, or find out where they are before the first frosts come in and make the leaves disappear and you wonder what happened to them. <laughs>